Howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, Greetings boys, boys and girls, and welcome, welcome to, to this another, another brand new day. Yes, another brand new day with me under siege, my life under hostage. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Another day where I'm not wearing my glasses because my chair is broken. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't even make sense to me. Largely, it's just I'm kind of feeling lazy right now. My glasses are filthy, and I need to take some of my cleansing cloths, you know, the little things that you rip open in a packet, and it's got the solution on it, and you clean the lens, and then it dries, and it's good. I've got those. I could use them. I have an itchy lip, but I've just been too lazy. So, uh, soon, soon, I'll be wearing glasses again, and that'll be good. Thumbs up for that. Plus, the chair that I ordered on Amazon has shipped, so it's on its way. I just have to hope this thing uh, doesn't fall apart entirely. <clears throat> right now, the part of the chair that keeps it from just falling backward all the time is the part that broke but so it just goes boom with if I sit up it just falls backward there's nothing to keep it from going backward and periodically if I lose my balance here I go all the way back and that's going to stress and strain it so eventually it's going to go thump crack and break off I and mean, I've had that happen before in the past I have had chairs that have a you know the swivel where you can lean back you've always got to pay attention I just looked at the wrong parts of the chair and didn't notice where it was breaking I was looking everywhere but the spot I needed to look so you need to look and pay attention and I've had them break in the past where I've fallen where it's just thump I went falling all the way down not much you can do. I don't want that to happen to this. I don't want it to break in such a way that I get hurt or break my equipment or anything like that. So, yeah. But the other chair is on its way. Yeah. Good thing. And then I got to make sure I don't lean back. Well, lean back, but don't lean fully back with all my weight on this, especially the way I've been gaining weight. Oy vey. Well, have gained. I'm not continuing to gain. I have gained to a certain point, and I have plateaued there. And I don't want to gain anymore. I want to lose what I have. Not all of it, of course, because I've gained a lot of weight since I was born. You know? So, I don't want to go down to my birth weight. We will eventually. Because you tend to dry out quite a bit. Especially if you, like, die someplace where uh, the local flora and fauna skeletonize you quickly. So thumbs up for that. Anyway, though, on that precious note, uh, first off, the Shelton, Washington weather and plague rat report. <coughs> Excuse me. When I went out last night, a lot of people were still wearing their masks masks even in public now so it's good we got everybody out there doing it i'm wearing mine more even when i have to wear my pre-rolls so even when there's nobody around i'm generally got my mask on so that's good definitely a thumbs up i don't couple reasons i want to do it properly number one of course is i don't want to make anyone sick i don't want to get sick i'm not worried about passing on the ash hole cafe bug i don't have it but it's also good for not passing on other things. That's why even after all this is over, I'm still likely gonna wear a mask if I feel even a little bit under the weather so that I don't pass on my germs to anyone else. Thumbs up for that. And for the weather, it was not raining. I took my travel brawly with me last night, but it didn't rain. It was damp, but it wasn't raining. And it's dark, of course, but it's not raining right now. So it's probably all damp and squishy outside, but not, you know, raining at the moment. Thumbs up for that as well. <coughs> now this one I wanted to write about. Write about? Yeah, well, if I was actually blogging and not vlogging. Human suffering, laughter, and taking joy in the pain of others. Because I don't like 
human suffering. I don't even like watching the, for ages, decades, and probably still is, I don't know if there still is the show, I don't watch TV, but for decades there was America's Funniest Home Videos, a TV show where people sent in their videos, and the funniest things that people really liked was people getting hurt. That's a common human thing. I mean, I've said before, <coughs> good Lord, I have said before how the essence of comedy is, well, it's as comedy and tragedy is, I cut my finger, that's a tragedy. You fell into an open sewer and died. Now that's comedy. So it's, Comedy, tragedy, that whole thing, but a real actual human suffering is probably something we shouldn't take a lot of joy from. Fictional suffering and death. I love horror movies and books that have a high body count. The more dead, the better. And the more innocent the dead, the more they shouldn't have deserved what happened to them to make them dead the better. So horrific, nightmarish, and generally I really enjoy that stuff because we're human beings, we're contrary and all that. Human suffering, actual human suffering, I don't like. Fictionalized human suffering, I worry about even though I enjoy it. I like slasher movies. Again, the more people killed, the better. And that bothers me because I don't like people getting desensitized and we shouldn't desensitize, desensitize ourselves to some things. And yet at the other hand, anything can be funny and it there's separations between fiction and reality. But I don't like actual human suffering real human suffering. Again, why I could not watch even America's Home Funniest videos. Why I don't like a lot of YouTube video things where the humor is dependent on somebody actually getting hurt. I don't like people getting hurt. And yet, in the failed insurrection of the United States, a couple days ago, this being what, the 11th? Like on the 6th, I can't remember the exact date. I find something that was horrific and nightmarish. I still can't stop giggling and laughing over it. Dying is horrible. It is an absolute interruption in the survival mechanism and your body does not like that because it's dying. When you're being electrocuted, that's not a good way to go. And if you're being electrocuted in a very delicate portion of your body, that's even worse. If you're having a heart attack, you can feel it before it happens and it hurts. You can feel the pain. And if you have that heart attack, you feel the pain and then you pass out when it's becoming intolerable and then you never wake up again. That is horrible and horrific. And yet, this one guy stood on a chair, I think it was, or just stood up to grab and steal a painting after they broke into the Capitol. And it fired the leads from his taser into his scrotum. And as if that wouldn't be bad enough, of course he fell because he just tasered himself in the sack. He fell in such a way that he landed on the trigger. So it kept firing constantly into his testicles until it shocked him so much and so hard he had a heart attack and died 
because he tased himself in the testicles. It is a horrific way to go. And I'm still, I am still, I have been fighting hard not to laugh over this. I mean, talk about fate and reality giving you a slap in the face. His family, his friends, whatever family, whatever friends he has, I haven't looked up. I don't care enough. The only thing I care about is he was part of the failed insurrection. He tasered himself in the testicles until he died. That's all I really care about the guy. That's a horrible way to go. His family and friends must be sad. I mean, he's gone forever and he will forever be known as the guy who tasered himself in the testicles until he died my cat has is now digging around there because she's been moving her bowels as i've been trying to speak thank you kitty i gotta clean that up as soon as i'm all done recording so on the one hand, I feel terrible. I feel terrible for the guy. I feel terrible for his friends. Death is not good. Painful death is not good. Losing a family member or a friend is horrible. It's painful. I mean, I lost my wife. I'm six years into it, and I'm only barely recovering. So it's hard. It hurts. But, oh my God, I cannot stop just laughing over this, and that's going to be his legacy. Tasered nutsack guy. <sighs> but, I don't know. I'm not going to talk any politics past what I have said. I mean, you're either for the United States or you're a Republican. You either believe in democracy or you're a Republican. So that's all I am going to say about it. And if people get mad in comments, remember, this is just my opinion. And my opinion doesn't change reality at all. Opinions change nothing. Whether I like or dislike something, whether I think something is criminal or not, doesn't change the abject, object value or actual point of what it is. You just know how I feel about it. So thumbs up. Anyway, though, on the side, I thought I'd also talk about this one real quick. I've talked about the cosmic horrors of lobsters before, and apparently shrimp are along that line as well. Lobsters have cosmic horrors because they actually have more of the... They're like rods. The rods, in, the, in our eyes, we have blue, red, and green. Lobsters have 13, so they can see 13 primary colors, while other shrimp have more, more than us, less than them. So they have more colors than they can, that they can see that we can't. Apparently, a lot of animals have taste buds that detect and, well, detect uh, water. They can taste water and enjoy it. They know what it tastes like. We don't have taste buds for it. We're lacking the taste buds for water. Water has a taste. We don't get to know what it is. Isn't that sad? How about that? More cosmic horror. <laughs> yes, yeah, just your know, person, object, location, or situation that is beyond our comprehension, doing something or existing in a way that we cannot understand with our knowledge, uh, with little or no regard for human safety or lives. And that's the ability to taste water. It's a very minor cosmic horror, <laughs> but it's a cosmic horror nonetheless. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm going to read in the comments right now. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. 
I am afterward going to read every comment, thumbs up each one I do. I have a lot of executive dysfunction. It is hard for me to actually reply. I'm doing my best in trying to do it a lot better than I have been. Thank you all for understanding and uh, thank you. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker, and even though I count American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibromyalgia, ADHD, and more, I'm amazed that I can even remember anything at all. So, thumbs up on that. Getting better all the time, but I'm approaching that level where I'm going to need meds to, to get any better. We have Suicide, thumbs up and thank you. Caden Villanueva, thank you very, very much. Franks RM, thumbs up and thank you. Spy Plota, thumbs up, thank you very, very much. Confused Owl 29, greatly appreciated, and that makes for some very, very good landscapes. Sierra Tapper, thumbs up and thank you. We have Nicholas Howes, greatly appreciated. Uh, looks like Katakata or Kanji, and then Just Some Guy, thumbs up and thank you. Dark Gaming 6009, greatly appreciated. Ollie B, thumbs up. Melissa R, greatly appreciated. Amir Am, thumbs up and thank you. Ben B, greatly Appreciate Colin Reisner, good to see you. We have Nathaniel Cowan Hart, thumbs up. Alan S, greatly appreciate. Christopher Thomas, good to see you. Potato Tron, good to see you in the comments. Thumbs up and thank you. And we have Russian Timing, greatly appreciated. There is Polixo, greatly appreciated. Mini Sugar, thumbs up and thank you. Alex Opadol. Well, actually, Alex Opadol was from yesterday. So, 21 people who left comments. Thank you all so very, very much. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people, if only in text. And that is a very good thing. You need the help when you are depressed. It's good to get out of the own echo chamber. The own echo chamber? It's good to get out of the echo chamber of your own skull. Thumbs up and thank you. Did I still? No, I just closed something. How about that? And if you could check out my various things down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com. If you could become a Patreon.com patron, like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money through the patronage, I have the PayPal link down below. If you'd like to help me out without sending money, I have an Amazon wish list link that I have to double check on to make sure that it does have cat food and hamster bedding, silly things and not silly things. If you could check it out, that would be cool. Now, do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence. Definite thumbs up and of course if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button that would be very cool as well. I hope to start streaming here again soon. So here's hoping. Thumbs up on that. And of course the lobster hat wearing duck head of judgment suffers from a surplus of scorn. It is ready not eager but ready to cast that scorn upon all it finds disappointing. Its mockery is severe. Do not disappoint the lobster hat wearing duck head of judgment. It suffers, ouch, it suffers from a surplus of scorn. And Black Lives Matter. Good golly, Miss Molly. And justice for everybody, the jack-booted, brown-shirted fascist thugs and police uniforms who keep beating, brutalizing, and murdering American citizens in their homes and on the streets. Joy. So, please wear a mask, wash your hands, try not to touch your face, stay at home unless you have to go out, and if you have to go out, please maintain your social distancing. This is insanely contagious and mutating to get worse all the time, so please, please be careful, it is very important. And I have this video here, I have the second half of another video, I just need to edit and render and upload, so that's a good thing. Definitely a thumbs up, and I got some phone calls that I gotta make, it being Monday, so I'm gonna be at least busy with something, so that's definitely a good thing. You take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing. Be as creative as you can, and practice as much self-care as you can.